Hello, physics dog. Physics dog, wake up. Are you awake? Let's go and do some physics. Now, lenses are incredible, but the first kind of lenses that ever used really just used this principle. What they did is they got um, a little circle, whatever it was, and they just got a few drops of water in there. And what you actually create there is a device that can zoom in. And if you look through there very, very closely, what you can see, you see the words start to be Magnum. So when light comes in from outside, essentially from infinity, what happens is the light rays are coming in almost parallel through this. So if you want to shine them onto like a Z Led Zeppelin II cover, then what you'd have to do is you'd have to get the lens like that and you'd move the lens until you've got a sharp focused image. And that there, as you can see, is focused image of outside. However, everything is upside down. What we need to be able to describe that is a few ray diagrams. So for here, for light rays at infinity, what you're going to see is the light rays will come in, they'll come in parallel, and they will uh, refract towards the central axis, the central uh, principal axis in the middle, and the light rays will cross over. Now, because the light rays are at infinity, they will focus at the focal point. The focal distance for this lens here, that is about 10 centimeters. Now, it's different when you have different situations. So what you actually need for this is a setup where you can um, say what's gonna happen if the light rays are not coming in from infinity. Right, what we need for the next bit is, is something wonderful, a gift I've got given to me by a parent. Uh, it's making using a telescope. Uh, by H. Percy Wilkins and Patrick Moore, the wonderful and enigmatic Patrick Moore. So what I've done is I've put the candle about 20 centimetres away from the lens. Now our lens is 10 centimetres focal length. So here, what should happen then is as I bring the book in like this, there should be a point at which, beautiful, just there, just run about there, a little bit closer, now it's unfocused. There we go. And there's a beautiful focused image. Now that should, should be, be also 20 centimetres away. So as we move the candle closer and closer in, and closer to the focal point, you will see that the image there, when it's focused, is a lot larger. It's increasing, it's magnifying it. And we need a ray diagram to be able to explain that. Now, if we put the candle significantly further away than two times the focal length, so I'll move the lens closer over here now. Right, so the big distance now, and you might quite reasonably be able to predict that you're gonna get a tiny image there. Look, it's absolutely tiny, and ray diagrams can help us out here too. So the final position then, which you need to be able to know about is this one, which is when you move the object closer than the focal point. So, here, focal distance about 10 centimetres, the object is now closer than 10 centimetres, so there's no way that will ever form an image. The light rays, when they're going out of there, are actually going to diverge. They will spread apart. They will never meet on this side of the lens. It will never be a real image. To actually find the image, you have to look through the end. It's now a virtual image, and it's magnified that way. Right, so when you're actually drawing the light rays, the first thing you do you draw the principal axis, a line that goes straight through the middle of the paper that you're using. Right, now, once you've got that, um, you need to draw here a, a lens. Now, for this lens here, this is a converging lens. And if you drew that on the line like that, then you end up with all sorts of trickiness and it might not be exactly right and just like me, you've drawn it wobbly. and and it's actually tricky to know where to draw the light rays from. So what we do is we draw a lens just with a single line with a couple of arrows on. Now for this lens here, a converging lens, or convex lens, we're going to draw two arrows on there. So that's like the top bits. So they're equal distances either side. What you need to do is draw the focal point on there and there. 
doesn't matter which way round the lens is, if it's equally the side, the light rays will focus at a particular point. Right, so here then, if I put an object here, there we go, and there's my object, that's how they're always drawn, just like that, nice and simple. Now these two rules that you need to follow are First of all, a light ray, any light ray that goes through the center of the lens will carry on straight, in a straight line, undeviating, just like this piece of wood, unyielding. Walnut, dragon heart string, 12 and 3 quarter inches. There, the light ray goes straight through the center and doesn't change. However, another light ray to draw on to help you, you figure out where the image is, is a parallel light ray. Now we know the amount of light rays will be, will be infinite. Um, but however, uh, what you can do is if you focus on two light rays and you can so, see exactly where the light ray is focused. Right, the second light ray here. So any light ray that's parallel to the principal axis will always go through the focal point. So let's draw that light ray in now. There we go. So the point where those two cross there, you're going to draw your oh, inverted image. And look, we're just looking at it physically. You can tell that one is smaller than that one. This is closer than 2f away, two times the focal length away. As you can see on this one here, the object is clearly further away than two times the focal length. So let's draw on our parallel light ray. And as always, this will go straight through the focal point. Then another light ray going straight through the center. And as you can see here, look, there is the image, and the image is smaller this time. You can see, so the further away you go, the smaller and smaller the image becomes. So, what's missing off this diagram here is some arrows. I didn't put these on the last one. Oops, every time there is a change in direction, you must draw an arrow on. Right, so what's going to happen now? The object is inside, it's closer than the focal length. So how do the rules change? They have not, they do not change. Right, so here, light ray coming across from the top, parallel, it's going to go through the focal point. Just line that up, there we go, and off it goes. Now, light ray straight through the middle, will carry on, undeviating, straight line, those rules have not changed. The only thing is here, now the light rays you can see here are diverging out, they were spread out to in. Infinity. Off they go. Never to meet. Right, so what's going to happen here is we now need to draw on construction lines. These construction lines just tell us that actually the light rays don't focus on that side of the um, lens. They focus on the same side of the lens to the object. And we draw some construction lines. And over here they meet. And what do we need to draw here? the up arrow on this side. As you can see, the object is the right way up. And this is what you're seeing when you look through this lens here, through the camera. What you're doing is you are looking through, as you can see, it is a virtual image. You cannot put your hand on it. In fact, if I put my finger on it, the finger actually becomes part of the image itself. That's not really my finger, it's a virtual image. Right, so the final diagram I'm going to show you is this one here. Now, you can see I've left the top and bottom blank, and there's a reason for that, because this is no longer a converging or convex lens, it is a concave lens, and concave lenses go in, so caves go in, just like the arrows here. You can see the arrows are now different. Now, the rules haven't changed, but the properties of this lens will be different. So when a light ray goes through, instead of being converged, it will diverge, divergent, just like the awesome movie. So my object's going to go here. There we go. I'll get a light ray that goes through parallel. But here, when it diverges, it will diverge 
at that angle there, lining up here with the focal point. It will diverge out that way. That's lining up there, so we can put on there a construction line, a dotted line, that will tell us where it's going to go. Right, okay, now, so the second line is going to go straight enough straight through the middle. There we go. Oh, look at this here, what's going to happen? The light rays are crossing over. Your image is going to be here because it's the right way up. It's a virtual image again. You're going to create a virtual image. There we go. And this is for a diverging or concave lens. Uh, the final thing I want to do with this setup here is prove to you why you should never, ever, ever look at the sun through a telescope.